Well, it's now time for the second exercise. And what you can do is implement what you see here on the screen on your actual simulation in the Simulink model. Well, as usual, it's a good idea to make a folder for this second exercise so that you keep what is working. And this is my second exercise. And if you open the simulation file, this is what you obtain. Well, in the top part, nothing has changed. This is still the model that you have constructed in exercise uh, one. We're still connecting VCAP and VINF. Huh? We don't have a controller yet, so we have to emulate this situation where the inverter current is zero. And here you recognize the PLL okay, from the theoretical course, and you know how to implement that. So there is a park transform in there, there's a PI controller and there is an integrator, okay. Then you have the two park transformations, I have decided to take the park transformation of both the inverter current and the grid current, okay. So this is the current flowing through L1, the first inductor, and this is the current flowing through the second inductor. I've put here a selector and later on I can control using eInf or eGrid. We've seen that from a control perspective that doesn't change anything. And here you have the prediction of the angle of a reference, okay, that is going to be used when I'm going to later on uh, construct my uh, ABC signals for the inverter voltage and this is taking into account the delay that you have in your control loop okay so if you look inside this is the computation that i've shown you in the theoretical part and this is the delay in the control loop so you can take it two two three times the sampling period well let's have a look at the simulation results i'm not going to show you uh, the results of exercise one that are shown in this scope. The idea is to show you what is happening and what is new in exercise two. So these are the results of the PLL. And if I look at the scope, this is what you obtain. Well, what you see on the top over here is the estimated PLL angle in a radiant. Okay, so you see that it's evolving between 0 and 2 pi if you do nothing in your simulation well you will see that your angle will keep on increasing and this is not something that is desired because if you're going to apply that on the actual system you will have an increasing number and at some stage you'll have problems numerical problems so the system is going to stop so it's not that difficult to reset the output of the integrator so that when the value is increasing above 2 pi, well, you subtract 2 pi and then you have this kind of result. You see here indeed the grid frequency that I've brought back to hertz here is 50 hertz. And here you see the DQ components of the grid uh, voltage and without a surprise as we are tracking the angle of rotation uh, the reference angle of rotation of the grid voltage we only have a component with respect to d here which is 230 volts times the square root of 2 and the q component is equal to 0 so this is what you should see on your scope after the second exercise well, for this exercise and the third exercise, you need the park transform. There are two options. The first option is to construct that block yourself. Okay, this is the option that I've taken here and I will show you now. So if you look in the block, you have, of course, the two blocks. The first one is the Clark transform and then there is this rotation. Okay, given the reference angle. Okay, so the Clark transform if you look at it it's well this multiplication by this matrix and this you can do using just a gain block this is something that we have done also in the state space lab and of course you have to put here matrix multiplication 
so this is the clock transform and then for the rotation you could for instance implement it like this okay so this gives you a self-constructed block the second option is to use a block that is available or blocks that are available in the simulink library browser this thing is to simply type park over here and if you do that you'll end up in this section transformations which is a subsection of the sim power systems library and you'll find a series of blocks that you can use and for instance here you have this block abc to dq well what they've kept here is this third homopolar component which is not of interest uh, to us so you would have to select the two first outputs but this is something that you can do and then here also you have the inverse transform inverse park transform dq to abc so there again uh, you will have the dq so you'll have to add a zero over there to construct this dq zero vector at the input and to obtain the abc vector uh, after inverse park transform but so this is the second option well for this lab on grid converter control you need a PI controller with saturation, feed forward functionality and tracking mode. Option one is to use the controller that you've constructed during the digital control lab. It was a discrete PID controller with all the needed functionalities. Uh, pay attention because some of you had problems with this controller in the sense that it was not possible to use it with vector signals okay so in this application here we need this functionality so if you're going to use your controller from the digital control lab you need to correct things to make sure that it works with vector signals well a second option is to use the controller the pi controller that i will introduce now so we have of course a set point we have to subtract the process value and we end up with the error okay so this is going to be multiplied by the gain of the controller and i will now construct a PI controller that looks a little bit different than the one that you're used to so I'm going to feed back my MV over here that's the output of the controller and over here I'll put a first order filter over here okay so i'll put a plus over here here and a plus over here okay so this is what is called the positive feedback implementation of the pi controller and i'm going to show you now that this is indeed a pi controller so mv is equal to kc times e plus one over tis plus one times mv i'm going to take this one to the other side so i'm going to have one minus one over ti s plus one times mv is kc e i'm going to put that now on the same denominator is equal to kce this one and this one they cancel out so you see that mv is equal to kc times one plus tis over tis e 
and this you can rewrite as kc 1 plus 1 over dis e and this is indeed a pi controller okay so this is a correct implementation of the pi controller well, I would like now to add a uh, feed forward. Okay, so you need to do this like this, right? And this is the MV feed forward plus and plus. Okay, later on I will be putting some saturation over here so if, if i add my feed forward at the end well that will not be working so i have to work differently and the way to do it is to add your feed forward over here okay and then of course to remove it over here like this and I'm adding it over here okay but since I'm adding it over here I've added in this part also and it shouldn't be there so I should subtract it over here so this is equivalent to uh, to what I had done previously and I have now added my feed forward. Well, I would like to use this PI controller with vector signals, so I have to use a block that allows vector signals and this is not the case for a first order system. But in Simulink, you can use a vector integrator. So we'll re-implement the first order using an integrator and this can be done as follows plus and minus sign and this implements a first order system indeed if we write the transfer function you have 1 over ti s divided by 1 plus 1 over TIS and this is indeed 1 over TIS plus 1 so this is a first order system so we can now replace this over here okay so we use our integrator one over ti okay and a minus sign over here and a plus sign over here so this is implementing here a first order system so we have arrived at this implementation of the pi controller uh, what we can now do is add for instance saturation okay so we simply add a saturation block over here And this block has inputs of parameters MV max and MV min. Well, next we can implement a manual mode. Okay, so this is done by adding this switch. And the 
switch is reacting on a binary signal MAN. Okay, so that's a binary signal. And it allows you to switch between the PI algorithm or the manual value MV MAN. It has to be said that for our application, this manual mode is not really relevant because the PI controllers are going to work in automatic mode all the time. And finally, we can implement a tracking mode. Okay, so what we'll do is add another switch. Okay, and this switch will react on a signal, a binary signal that is track on. And if track on is activated, well, you will track a value that is track val. This is similar to what we have done in the course digital control. And if track on is zero, well, you simply activate the PI controller. And this tracking functionality will be something that is useful here in this lab on grid converter control. So you have now a full PI controller with all the functionalities that are needed for this uh, lab and it's completely equivalent to what you have done in the lab on digital control except that here of course your controller is still in continuous time but both approaches will work.